Well, good afternoon, everybody, and uh, welcome to the Pastor Study again. Uh, it's so nice to have each and every one of you here with us joining via the Internet. Uh, this is the midweek prayer service here at uh, Bethesda Baptist Church, and uh, this will be airing on April the 1st, which will be a Wednesday. Uh, and we've got a few things that have come up that we've added that we've tried to make uh, just a little bit better, tried to make it uh, uh, a little more user friendly, trying to help uh, as much as we can. I've had several folks call me about the um, about the prayer request list and you know of course Wednesday night here at Bethesda that was a time that we voiced our lists. We had the lists uh, you know on the screen where you could see them and uh, during that time uh, we were able to find out about our friends and our loved ones and uh, uh, the prayer needs of the church and the congregation. Uh, so I've had several calls about uh, how they could get that. Now, you know as we uh, record this, uh, we certainly do not use folks' last names uh, when we put prayer requests out uh, because uh, there are some people that are very sensitive to that and they would, they've would requested that their last names be not be put out. So what we've done, we have prepared a written uh, well, actually, it's digital uh, prayer request list. Uh, it will have all of the names on there that have been called into the prayer chain. It will have those prayer requests that you've called me or let somebody know uh, that we could make sure that we, we could get it on there. And the way we're going to get this prayer list, written prayer list, which will have the last names and usually some kind of brief statement uh, as to whether a person's in the hospital or out of the hospital or, or whatever. Uh, the only way you can get that is to call the church office, 706-556-6818. That's 706-556-6818, Monday through Thursday, from the hours of 8 to 1230. That's Monday through Thursday. From the hours of 8 to 12 30. Uh, at that time you should be able to talk to Miss Carol uh, if not you leave a message and we, if, when, as soon as we get your email address uh, you can too receive a copy of the uh, of this document which will have the prayer chain on there it'll have the the prayer needs it will have the names uh, of our membership that are currently you know what I'm saying requesting prayer so we do ask you to avail yourself of that. Now we're only sending that to members. Uh, so if you're a member of Bethesda Baptist Church and you'd like to have uh, this sent to your inbox, again, call 706-556-6818. And when you get in touch with Miss Carol, give her your email address. And she will, on Wednesdays, be emailing out an updated list so that everybody can have a copy of the prayer needs of the church. So uh, that's something new we're at, and we're trying to continue again uh, to keep everybody as close as is humanly possible. Now, that having been said, I'm going to run through this list very, very quickly. Uh, Shirley and Roger, uh, I talked to Mr. Roger. Miss Shirley is doing really well. Uh, she is on the recovery road, and we're so very, very thankful for that. Uh, and he's thanked the church for their prayers. Continue to pray for him. Uh, he has an upcoming procedure scheduled. Uh, and, of course, with this virus, I think it's kind of stood everything on its ears. Uh, so I don't really have a date on that. Uh, but be much in prayer for him uh, as he ministers to his wife uh, and as he uh, prepares for this procedure that he's going to be facing. Also, let's not forget Miss Sandra Bach. Miss Sandra, uh, please uh, continue to pray for her and lift her up. Uh, you know, she is still struggling with some things in her life, uh, and we would just ask for her prayers. Uh, Molly and Bill, uh, as well, they're on our prayer list. Uh, uh, pray for them, encourage them. Uh, and then uh, Sandy and Dan. Uh, Miss Sandy is, uh, uh, again, ministering to her wonderful husband. Uh, they're going to make some upcoming difficult decisions uh, in just the next little while. Uh, so be very much in prayer for, uh, 
for that family. Uh, and then uh, Mr. Warren, uh, real, real popular fellow and well-known uh, part of a singing group, uh, has suffered a stroke. Uh, now, I haven't gotten an update on that, uh, but we need to be much in prayer for Mr. Warren. Uh, and then, of course, uh, uh, Brother Jim. Uh, Brother Jim went and had the tests that, uh, uh, that his doctors told him that he really needed to have done, uh, trying to make a determination and a prognosis on what he's facing. Uh, and he is still now waiting on those test results. I think he's got some blood work in that he had done Monday. Uh, and I want to say he was supposed to go uh, either today or the next day to have those results read to him. Uh, then uh, let's remember uh, uh, Miss Helen. Miss Helen is Miss Mary's sister. Uh, she's in the hospital in Macon. Uh, Miss Mary has returned home from Macon uh, since they found out that they stopped them at the emergency room door. Uh, and would not let her, which Miss Helen is her sister, would not let uh, Miss Helen's daughter uh, enter the hospital. Matter of fact, they stayed. They had to sit in the parking lot uh, because, again, they're trying. They've got the hospitals locked down, and from what I understand, uh, they're not even allowing parents of small children. Uh, if you're not a patient, they're they're just not letting you in. They're uh, very concerned about the spread of this virus and to try and curtail it. Uh, as much as possible. Uh, sorry, you have to let me scroll down through here. Uh, Miss Mary was admitted to University of McDuffie, uh, and we were hoping for just overnight observation. Uh, have not talked to her or her family this uh, today, uh, but we're hoping and praying that she was able to come home. Uh, again, as always, our nation, uh, our church, uh, you know what I'm saying? We've got a lot of folks. Uh, in our nation that are in desperate need right now. Folks in New York, folks in California uh, are really going through it right now. So we need to pray for God's intervention uh, and protection on them. Uh, Miss Nancy uh, got her cast off uh, and is currently in a splint uh, and said that she is uh, really, the pain has really subsided uh, and that she is really looking on the road to recovery and really looks forward to that. Then also, uh, Brother Jimmy uh, has gone home from the hospital uh, after completing the rehab. Uh, he is at home. Again, I have not had a chance to talk to him, uh, but I've had several folks call me and ask about his condition. So uh, I know he's glad to be out there. I think he was in there almost three weeks. Uh, so you know how that goes. That can really, really work on your nerves. So again, if you'd like a copy of this complete list, uh, with any additions that might come in between now and the time that it's actually published, uh, if you will call the church office, uh, give Miss Carol your uh, email address as a member of the church, we will make sure that you get a copy of this every Wednesday. Okay? So, if you will, if you'll get your, go ahead and get your Bible uh, and get ready, uh, because we're fixing to go into uh, the Wednesday night Bible study portion. Uh, of, uh, of our service, okay? But join me uh, as we pray for these names uh, and ask for God's intervention. Our Father and our God, as we bow in your presence, Lord, we just, we thank you for grace. We thank you, Lord, for loving us, uh, not because of who we are or what we've done, but, Lord, because of who you are. We thank you for that. Father, we pray now, Lord, uh, for these prayer requests. You've heard the petitions, and Lord, I'm sure there are many more that I haven't mentioned, Lord, that have either been mentioned to me uh, in a phone call or, or maybe a text, or Lord, Father, there, there are some right now maybe that are on the hearts of our church members and those that are listening by way of the internet. Father, we simply pray for each one of these requests, and, and Lord, while we may not know the details of every situation, Father, we know you do, and we thank you for that. And Lord, we thank you that you're our God. We thank you that you're the God of the Bible, that you're the God of healing. And Father, I would pray, Lord, now that, uh, Lord, you bless these folks, that you bless these requests. Lord, I pray that you be with those that made the requests and comfort their hearts. Lord, obviously, they're concerned about their loved ones and their friends and the people that they know and work with and maybe do business with. Lord, we pray, Father, that you would uh, bless them. 
encourage them, Lord, that they would be an encouragement to even those that put on the prayer list. Father, for those who have upcoming decisions, Lord, we just pray, God, that you would give them wisdom. Father, that they would make decisions that would honor and glorify you. Father, we pray, Lord, that uh, uh, Lord, that those that are sick, Father, those even maybe that have this virus, Father, we ask for your intervention and your hedge of protection. Lord, we pray that you protect, Lord, those that are the most vulnerable. Father, just keep them safe. And, and Father, bless our nation. Lord, we thank you that we do live in the greatest nation in the world today. And, and Father, while we know that there are a lot of wayward things going on in our country and our government, uh, Lord, in the places where we live, in our communities and our families, Father, we also know that this nation is blessed beyond measure. And Father, we, we know those blessings come from you. Father, we ask for your continued blessings. Lord, we can't survive without them. Father, we pray that you'd bless our nation and the, the families and the people affected by this virus. Father, we pray, Lord, that you'd be with our leaders, that you'd give them wisdom. Father, that you'd give them courage to do that which would honor you, that which is right. Now, Father, we ask that you'd speak to our hearts as we open your word. Lord, we just pray, God, that you would uh, give us wisdom as we look into it, encouragement and strength, Lord, uh, as we go through these difficult days. And, Father, we'll be absolutely sure that only the name of Jesus receives all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. Because we ask all of these things in the precious and the holy name of Jesus. And all God's people said with me, Amen. Amen. I hope you have your Bible there in front of you. You're going to need it tonight. We're going to be in the book of Genesis. We're going to be in the book of Genesis. That's uh, If you go to page one uh, and go through the credits and the index, you're going to come to uh, the book of Genesis, the very first one uh, that is printed in our Bibles. Uh, we're going to go back to Genesis because... Uh, I want to look at a young man's life who went through way more than we are going through right now, but but yet I, I see uh, um, an air of discouragement. You know, even the president has said uh, that this idea of being quarantined or sequestered in our homes uh, has a a negative mental effect, uh, and certainly it does. You know, people want to be out. Uh, God created us as social beings, and and most folks like to be around other people, and especially God's people, because we draw strength from one another. So as we're separated, of course, always a concern for every pastor, every leader in every church is, is the flock to be separated or to be weakened. And so it has not only a negative mental effect, but it also has a negative spiritual effect. And, and if we're not real careful, we can come to a place uh, of complacency. But, but, you know, the Bible tells us that everything that goes on in our lives, everything has purpose. God has a reason. There, there is no coincidence. There is no happenstance. God has a purpose in this virus. God is trying to speak to not only his people, he is trying to speak to our nation. And, and the effects that are global, he's trying to speak to the world. So, so I, I think it's only right that we, we look at some of those situations. Maybe, maybe that might be, we might look at them as negative, but yet in the end, God used these occurrences, these situations, in order to bless his people. So hopefully we'll be able to draw some strength from that. We'll be in Genesis tonight. We'll be in two chapters. We'll be in chapter uh, 30, I think 36, and we will be in chapter 38. Chapter 36 uh, and chapter 38. So uh, we encourage you to get your Bibles, follow along with us. So how are we gonna measure success? Uh, 2020 has kind of gotten off to a rough start, hasn't it? I mean, uh, uh, I don't know about you. I, I don't know whether uh, you would consider uh, this to be a victorious year or a successful year. You know, most of us uh, would look at it and say, man, you know, this is just going to uh, go downhill. You know, a lot of the experts say things will get worse before they get better. So, so I wonder in our hearts, 
Can we start from a deficit and have a successful year? Can we start from an area maybe where, uh, not where we thought we were supposed to be, uh, maybe where we thought God wouldn't leave us. Maybe, maybe we thought from a place that, that you know, we, we looked at it last year and we said, man, you know, uh, we, it, last year was so successful. Maybe, maybe to you success is a different job. Maybe, maybe, maybe a, a new spouse, maybe, maybe a new house, new town, maybe even new children. Maybe, maybe something different going on. He said, man, 2019 was so successful, but boy, 2020 is certainly starting off uh, in what you would consider to be the negative. Well, today I want to look at the view from the pit. The view from the pit. Now, we have to remember, we're going to be talking about a young man by the name of Joseph. And Joseph uh, had some brothers. And if you'll remember, uh, he, Joseph uh, was the youngest of the sons in. There was one more born after him, Benjamin. Uh, but, but he was his father's favorite. He was a, a dreamer. Uh, he was uh, an interpreter of dreams. Uh, you remember there were several dreams that he interpreted to his father. Uh, and, you know, when his brothers... Uh, got that, huh, uh, that idea about those dreams, you know, his brothers hated him. His brothers, uh, because it showed uh, in one of the dreams where he would be a ruler over them. And of course, older brothers don't like the idea uh, of younger brothers being in charge or, or having control. And so, so they came up with a plan uh, that they were going to kill him. He actually uh, been given a coat of many colors, which showed kind of a leadership favoritism uh, by his father. And he was out in the field talking to his brothers. And, and when his brothers saw him coming, uh, they came up with a plot to do away with him. Uh, they were tired of his uh, interpretations of the dreams. They were, they were tired of him having them. They were tired of the fact that, you know what, they were out there working, and yet he seemed to be uh, dad's favorite. And so, so they, they came to a point where they said, look, we're, we're going to kill him. And, and, of course, Reuben said, uh, you know, no, let, let's, don't, let's don't kill him. We, we don't want to kill him. That would be the wrong thing to do. So his brothers uh, put him into a pit, uh, you know what I'm saying, until they could decide what they were going to do. Now, some of us today are thinking that, you know what, in 2020, we're like Joseph. Maybe you've been ill. Uh, you know, God forbid, maybe you've lost your job. Maybe, maybe, you know what I'm saying, you've got bills piling up and really don't see any light at the end of the tunnel. Maybe, maybe today you feel like you're in a pit. I'm sure that some of the nation's leaders feel like our nation is in a pit right now. It seems like no matter what is done, it's not enough. It's not soon enough. There's not enough of whatever uh, to be able to meet the need. Now, you have to ask yourself now, if Joseph, and we know that Joseph was going to become a great leader in Egypt, if Joseph was going to be all of these things that God was going to bless, why a pit? Why would, would Joseph be blessed beyond measure in this life and yet now find himself in a pit? I mean, you know, really, was it, was it God's plan? I, I mean, did, did, you know, you hear this all the time when something tragic happens. They say, well, well, well did God, uh, uh, you know, was this God's plan? Well, uh, yes and no. Did God know exactly what's going to happen? God knows everything. He's omniscient. Therefore, he knows. But what I want you to notice something that in, in chapter, I'm sorry, I, it was chapter 37, not 36. In chapter 37, what we find is the fact that, you know what? From this point forward, throughout the rest of Joseph's life, uh, in many instances, God is going to work out everything that happens to Joseph. Matter of fact, actually, as we see Joseph's lives and the events unfold, you know what we're going to find out? We're going to find out that it could not have been anybody but God 
no one else could have orchestrated the things that were going to happen in his life. You know, so oftentimes, God has to allow us to be put into a pit. And you know, usually the pit experience occurs uh, after we've exhausted all other options. Usually God places us in a situation like that when there really is no plan B. There really is no way out but to look up. Now, if you think about that, think about the last few years. Man, the economy has been booming. People have nice houses and were able to save the, the down payment. They have, they have nice cars. And, and, and right now, you know, there are a lot of people before this happened. They had good health. They had good doctors. You know, it, it seemed like we had everything going our way. It seemed like uh, we were on top of the world. And then something like this occurs. And it seems like we're in the pit again. Now, why does God allow that? Well, I just told you that sometimes God has to take the options away from us. You know, for, for years, we've depended upon our economy. For years, we've depended on, uh, you know, our military might in the world. For years, we've depended on uh, our political system uh, to at least give some form of of justice. For years, we've always figured, well, if we have a problem, the government will bail us out. If this virus has done nothing else, it should teach all of us, even God's people, that our faith can only be in the Lord. Now, you're saying, well, preacher, does that mean that we're not prepared? Does that mean that we, we don't uh, make preparations and, and have stockpiles of medicines and, and have ultimately good trained doctors. I absolutely think all of those things are wonderful, but I also understand this, that when we come out of this, and I, and I believe we will come out of this, as wonderful as our doctors are, as wonderful as our government is, as wonderful as our leadership may be, it won't be because of them. It will be because of our Lord. It will be because he has lifted us out of the pit. And I really do believe that, that God is bringing America to a point to realize that there is no plan outside of God's plan. So Joseph finds himself in a pit, only able to depend upon God. Now, there are many people today who would say, you know what, preacher, I feel like I'm in a pit right now. Well, you know, God's people can't really say that, even no matter what we may face. Matter of fact, Romans 8 and 37 says, it says, Paul writes, nay, he said, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. You know, the Apostle Paul lived in, lived in a very difficult time. He lived in a time when Rome had her thumb on, on all of Palestine, uh, of, of most of the known world at that time. And they could be very brutal in the way they did things. History tells us some of their uh, escapades and antics as they conquered the world and became an empire. And as they persecuted the Christians and as things didn't go the way maybe Christians thought they should. Paul says, you know what? In, in all of the things that can happen to us, he says, we're more than conquerors. We're more than conquerors through him that loved us. In other words, if our faith is in God, if our trust is in the Lord Jesus, guess what? It doesn't matter what happens to us because whatever happens to us now is only temporary. The prophet Isaiah wrote in Isaiah 54 and 17, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Paul told the Philippian believers in Philippians 4 and verse 13, he says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Right now, God's people are being called on to do all things. 
We hear of churches that are involved with uh, packing the lunches and delivering them uh, to students who are out of school, people who don't have food. We hear about God's people reaching out to their neighbors. We're being called upon to do all kind of things that, that maybe in the past we didn't think we would have to. And Paul says, you know what? We can do all of those things, not through ourselves. But he says, I can do all things through Christ. He says, as long as I'm depending on him, I can be encouraged. Now let's take our mind. Let's go to chapter 37 uh, of the book of Genesis. And let's look at verse 28. Chapter 37, verse 28. And it says this. Then there passed by Midianites, merchants, and they drew and they lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. And they brought Joseph into Egypt. And verse 36 says, And the Midianites sold him into Egypt unto Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, and a captain of the guard. Now, you're talking about things going from bad to worse in my eyes. First, he's in a pit, not knowing whether he's going to be just left to die and perish for lack of water or food or some wild animal or maybe even a, a serpent getting in that pit with him. But now, when it looks like, like the Lord's delivering him, he comes up out of the pit, uh, and guess what happens? Sold into slavery sold into slavery, this little Israelite boy, young man. Could that really be God at work? Could that really be? I mean, how could this get any better? Joseph prayed for deliverance. He didn't pray for slavery. And I guess the lesson that we can take away from this is that, you know, sometimes God's deliverance doesn't come in the form we choose. All of us would, would like best for this virus to just go away. In all likelihood, that's probably not going to happen. But you know, whatever way God chooses to deliver us, the one thing we can count on is His deliverance. You see, we tend to criticize God's deliverance when we can't see where he's taking us. Right now, the nation doesn't know which direction it's going in. Matter of fact, many of your neighbors right now uh, are faced with their mortality. Maybe some of them at a much younger age than they thought they'd ever have to look at it. And so, so when we look at this not being able to meet together and this virus, and, and we look at it in a negative, you know, actually God may be trying to do a work in the life of this nation. In other words, he may be trying to use his people to reach across their back fence. Maybe talk to their neighbors who don't have a relationship with Christ. Maybe be able to comfort or console some people who are so scared for, for their very mortality through this. You see, God may be carrying his church to a new place a place of actual ministry outside the walls of the church. I was meeting with some pastors via uh, Zoom today, and it was interesting. You know, one of, one of the gentlemen said, you know, if you have to come to church to worship God, maybe what God is trying to teach us is, is you know what? You can take God home and worship him there. Amen? You see, we don't have to be in a building. The church isn't a building anyway. It's, it's God's people. So, so before we get ready to, to say, God, why did you let this happen? Let us look for his deliverance. May not come in the form we look. May not come in the form that, that we would have done it. I don't know if you've ever done that. I, I'm bad to do that with my son. Uh, so oftentimes he's helping me and he, when he doesn't do it the way I want it done, or the way I would have done it, I become critical. Oftentimes, he achieves much better results than I would have achieved. However, he didn't do it the way I wanted it done, or I would have done it. Well, you know what? Maybe, maybe God 
is taking us as his people out of our comfort zone. Maybe he's bringing us to a point of saying, okay, now I'm sending you out. Now I'm sending you into the world to reach those that don't know me. Now, if you go to chapter 39, I, I got both these chapters wrong, I'm sorry. If you go to chapter 39, we see the, the other part of this text. In chapter 39 of the book of Genesis, verses 1 through 5, it says, And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him at the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him, and he made him overseer over his house, and all that he had he put into his hands. And it came to pass from that time he made him overseer of his house and over all he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Pharaoh or Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in his house and in the field. It tells us that, you know what? Everything that Joseph touched prospered. Matter of fact, it tells us that he was a prosperous man in verse 2. Now, that's hard to say of a slave. We don't think of a slave as, as being prosperous. But, you know, Joseph prospered because God's blessing was on him. Now, now remember, this is a man that started in the pit. This is a man that, that started way up high as his father's favorite. He, now with, he finds himself in a pit. Now he finds himself as a slave. In Egypt. And God is using every situation, circumstance to prosper him. You see, whether we realize it or not, God's hand has been on this nation. What a shame it is that those in politics and power, the intelligentsia, the educated, so many so many today would say that God doesn't exist. Our director of missions, Brother Tim Batchelor, was reading a, uh, an article that he had read online uh, from a, um, uh, a doctor in Italy. And the doctor said, you know what, that when he was young, uh, he had faith. He was in the church. But as he had grown, grown older and got educated, he said that most of the people over there were atheists. Most of the, the they depended on science. They, they thought their salvation could be in science. And, and as this virus hit and, and, and as they were burying 120 a week, they couldn't even bury them. They were just stacking the coffins on top of one another because no one could go to a funeral for fear of the virus. It seems that a a 76-year-old priest was admitted with the virus. And what he noticed as he watched the priest make his rounds, he noticed that the priest always had a Bible, that he was reading to those patients who were dying, who that doctor knew by the end of the day would be gone. And he was trying to bring words of encouragement from the scripture to them and that doctor saw something in him that rekindled that desire to know God, that desire to have a relationship with Jesus. And he writes in that article, you know, that man brought me back to where I needed to be. His actions, I saw Jesus in him. Now, now think about that for a minute because this, this priest dies less than a week later. Think about the impact that he had upon those doctors and that staff who were ministering to dying people. You know, it's very much like Joseph, if you think about it, because while he was prosperous, 
the Bible says that, you know what? He prospered Potiphar's house because of Joseph. In other words, his hand of protection was on Joseph. And the Egyptian saw it. So the Egyptian put him in charge of everything because he knew God was blessing Joseph. You know, wouldn't it be wonderful that at the end of all of this, when it's over, whatever over looks like, wouldn't it be wonderful to hear more testimonies like that? Testimonies from, from people who had lost their faith, maybe never came to faith in Christ, saying, you know, I saw somebody go through a really difficult time and, and, and I could see God in them. Oh, it wasn't that they didn't lose their job. They lost their job just like me. It wasn't maybe that they, they, they didn't lose their car or, or that they weren't, you know, in debt because they couldn't make their bills. It wasn't that, that everything was going their way. Matter of fact, it was the exact opposite. But yet, it, even in that adversity, their joy was in the Lord. That's because we know this world is not our home. You see, God was at work. God was at work in Joseph's life. Now, if you go to verse 7 here, we read about, it says, And it came to pass after these things, that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph, and she said, lie with me. Well, you know, there was the integrity test. You know, after everything was going Joseph's way, God was blessing him, there was Potiphar's wife. And Potiphar's wife desired to be with Joseph. And when you know the story, Joseph uh, ran away from her and she tore his clothes, his cloak. And when Potiphar came and said, look, this is the, the guy you put in charge of everything. This is the slave. And he tried to, to have his way with me. And look, here's proof I have his coat. Guess where Joseph wound up? Back in prison. You know, it seemed like he was back in square one God had taken him out of the pit he was sold into slavery he did wonderful things because God's hand was on him and now now because he did the right thing he finds himself back at square one you know Joseph's life is a study and integrity and perseverance. And I wonder right now if the things we're going through, God is testing us. God is testing his people to see how we will respond. Will we cower in fear? Will we run because we're afraid? Will we give up everything that we hold true and dear uh, and believe uh, just so that maybe we won't be infected with the virus? Will we forsake our fellow man? Will we, will we say, hey, look, uh, I'm not giving to the church down there. I may need that. I, I, I can't do that. I guess what I'm saying is, right now, God is asking us to put everything on the line. And I think he expects us to respond in a different way. Everything we hear today is negative. Everything we hear today are about death rates and, and infection rates and maps that turn red before our eyes. And for God's people, the only thing that it should do for us is make us look to heaven. Make us look up. David said that God was his shield and his buckler. In other words, you know what? God was the one that went out front. And church, 
we need God to go out in front of us. You know, Joseph went from the pit to the pinnacle. He went from a molehill to a mountaintop, and now he's back at the bottom. Well, we all experience time in the pit. Maybe right now that's where our nation feels like she is. But I want you to know this, that just as surely as God delivered Joseph, he'll deliver you. He is the God of deliverance. And you know what? Even when we really don't understand what God is doing, he expects faithfulness. He expects integrity. He expects us to act like God's people. So right now, if you feel like you're in a pit, and most of us do, we can look to the hills, to the heavens. Our help is coming. God is, is like the Calvary in the old uh, black and white westerns. He's never early. And he's never late. He's there just in time. Church, continue to seek his face. Continue to have time with your family in God's word, in prayer. Pray for your church right now. Not only our church, all churches are going through very difficult times. This is a difficult season for us. But this we must know. We serve the God of the Bible. We serve the God of deliverance. If he loved us so much that he would give his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. If he did that for us, what can a virus do to us? You know, people say, well, you know, preacher, I'm not ready to die yet. Well, I don't think I'm ready to either. I don't want to run out in front of a truck. I don't want to do something stupid, you know. But I do know this. I know that this is not my home. And that if God chooses to take me away from here, it is for my better. And also, too, I know this. I've seen him deliver over and over. This nation has enjoyed his blessings over and over and over. And it is time for us as a people to praise him. So today, if you're in the pit, look up. That's where our strength comes from. Know this, we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. I love you all. I miss you all. Please, I hope if you haven't heard from somebody from the church, please, teachers, continue to call your class members. Class members, continue to call each other. Every person, our goal is every person in this church, in this body of believers, receives a touch from someone within this church. If you have a need, please call the church office. Please call a deacon. Please call me. And we will do what we can to try and help you. Know that we love you. Know that we miss you. And know that we will see you just as soon as we can. Join me as we close in prayer. Our Father and our God, as we bow in your presence, what lessons we learn from, from Joseph's life. Father, what it must be to, to live in the pit. But Father, thank you, Lord, that you didn't leave him there. And Lord, you're not going to leave us there. Thank you, Father, that you, you blessed him and everything that he touched. And Father, we ask it that you'd continue to bless our nation with your presence, your peace. Father, use this time is a time to speak to a nation to show us the need to have a relationship with you. 
Now, Father, encourage and strengthen. Lord, watch over the flock. Keep them safe. And we'll praise you, worship you, and honor you for all that's accomplished because we've asked all of these things in the precious and the holy name of Jesus. And my family said with me, Amen. Good night, folks. Take care. God bless.